Here we are where the engineering and production labs live. This is quite an impressive scene. It is. We've got a lot going on here. This particular section is all about applications. We're actually turning the chips in entire power electronics systems that could charge your phone, charge an electric car, or your solar panels. It's all happening here. This is Navitas Semiconductor, a global technology company that manages the world of electronics from right here in Torrance. Its mission is to accelerate the planet's transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources. Our slogan actually is electrify our world. We actually own that and trademark it because it's really what we're all about, electrifying the applications of the entire world. It's not just going to be great for consumers, it's going to be great for our planet, for sustainability, for clean energy. CEO Gene Sheridan isn't just hypothesizing about what his company could be. In just seven years, it grew from a humble startup to a multi-million dollar success story. We make power chips out of a new material that replaces silicon. Two types, gallium nitride, or GAN for short, and the other one is called silicon carbide. These two materials combine together and make a much more powerful electric bond, much better than you could ever do with silicon. And with that more powerful chip means we can make more powerful equipment and especially more energy efficient equipment. We can miniaturize things. We can make them cheaper, smaller, and simpler. Navitas was started 10 years ago the work on gallium nitride and silicon carbide was started even 10 or 15 years by the industry before that. We've come along and made the best version, the most integrated, highest performance version of gallium nitride and silicon carbide. And even that took 10 years to create the great success that we are today. But if you're thinking, wait, what exactly is a semiconductor? You wouldn't be alone. Let Gene explain. Anything with electronics is going to use semiconductors at the heart of it. Imagine it's the brain, the thing that's doing the thinking, the data crunching. Obviously, your smartphone is the best example we can all relate to. That smartphone is constantly thinking and working for you very hard. But what all electronics also need is electrical power to power them. That's where Navitas's power chips come into play. In the example of a smartphone, we can fast charge that smartphone up to three times faster than a traditional silicon chip and do it with an adapter that plugs into the wall that's half the size and weight. Who doesn't want faster charging with smaller little adapters that you carry on to charge that critically needed smartphone we all obsess with all day long? Enter the future of charging with Navitas. We've been crazy successful with mobile chargers. We started with the aftermarket guys because they move faster, smaller companies. Companies like Anchor, Belkin, Amazon, they're all using our gallium nitride technology to create chargers, but then quickly went to everybody who makes the phones, the laptops and the tablets. And basically it's the who's who list. 10 out of the top 10 smartphone, tablet and laptop players are using our technology. That's everybody from, where do I start? Lenovo, Dell, HP, Xiaomi, Oppo, Samsung, you name it, they're using this technology. If they're not already in production, they're planning their next generation because it's simply a better way to make a charger more energy efficient, faster charging, smaller, and lighter weight. And now we did our IPO, raised $300 million just two years ago to expand that technology to go into much broader markets like data center, electric vehicle, solar energy storage, and others. This next-gen semiconductor company employs close to 300 people in nine locations worldwide, including this corporate headquarters right here in Torrance. But like all good stories, getting to the largest city in the South Bay didn't come without a journey. 2014, the company started in a trailer parked inside a Malibu parking lot, then moved into a larger space in El Segundo before finding its current home in our backyard. We needed a bigger footprint. We also were starting to move into small scale manufacturing. A lot of that's done in Asia, but we're actually bringing a lot of those jobs back here in the US. So we needed to think very strategically about where to place this company that could set us up for growth to attract R&D talent, but even manufacturing capability where we could be cost effective, but still stay close to our roots here in Southern California. And of course we selected Torrance. We wanted something centrally located. This is still 15 minutes from the airport, 10 to 15 minutes from all the major freeways. In this region, you can draw from talent from Northern LA, Eastern LA, to down in San Diego, even coming up. We have people in Orange County that commute three days a week. So it's a great central location. You still get all the benefits of California, the warm weather and the beaches, but at the same time, far more cost effective actually than the surrounding beach city areas. So for us, it was an ideal and obvious choice to choose Torrance for our new headquarter location. And from this new home, the company has started a new initiative called the Clean Energy Workforce Development Program. We believe there's a lot to educate the local businesses, local communities, and local labor force about the opportunity to change to clean energy and electrified applications, the opportunity to work in this field of gallium nitride and silicon carbide. And we have just started now to roll out this program and define it and to work with a lot of the local agencies. 
One local agency is the South Bay Workforce Investment Board. We're on board with Navitas to meet their hiring needs. And they're going to be hiring a lot of new individuals. We think about 75 new individuals. And we're going to do recruitments for them. And many of the individuals we could pre-screen and screen and provide them with individuals that meet their satisfaction. But more than that, we could take the individuals that are on board right now or that they're going to get from other sites and upgrade their skills and subsidize the upgrading of their skills. While Navitas is showing up strong in and for Torrance, so too are city leaders for the company. Mayor Chen came to visit us. He and his team showed a lot of interest in what we do, actually kind of understood it, and really excited that there is a vision, a story, and an excitement to how this is gonna give back to the community, give back to our country, not only bring jobs to America, but also bring clean energy semiconductors to our world. And that really kicked off the relationship that now we're working in many different directions to work for the Torrance organization. About 80 employees buzz around this 50,000 square foot two level facility on any given day. And Sheridan says he wanted to create a culture that focuses on work and play. With everybody coming back from the pandemic, getting everybody back into the office is a big thing. We've got this great new facility. We want to fill it. We want to get people engaged. So we're tapping into a lot of the local restaurants, local fun social activities. And usually once or twice a week, we're doing things often on premises here to kind of get people back to the office. That's really helping to get everybody and building this real sense of community and also tapping into and supporting the local Torrance businesses. As for this business, there is much to see and learn inside the headquarters. Let's talk about all the patents you guys have. Yeah, a lot of them, 185 patents, which is a lot of patents for a company even at this stage of 10 years, but it's because we created this exciting new material called gallium nitride but the circuits are where the action is. And to make the circuits, they're completely different than how we did them for the last 30 years in silicon. It's a different material. You have to think about all new circuits. So there's a lot of problem solving, a lot of invention, and ultimately all that problem solving invention translates into great patents, 185 of them, to not only solidify what we've created, but to protect it so other people can't copy us. Okay, so now we're getting into the nuts and bolts of what you guys do here, and that looks really techy to me. Yeah, it sure is, yeah. Ben here, one of our top engineers, is actually working on what we call a PDK, a process design kit. All those 185 patents I told you about, those are embedded in a design library that you can pick from, pick and choose to create these chips. And that design library is completely proprietary. It's probably our crown jewels for the entire company. In fact, no one engineer other than the C2 has access to the entire PDK because it really is the crown jewel. If our competition got that, they would know how to design all of these really advanced GAN integrated circuits in, in gallium nitride. But luckily she has access to it, knows how to do it, and is building some really cool next generation chips that I can't tell you a thing about until they come out, but they're going to be even more amazing than the ones we have shipping today. This has to be the most impressive part of your space. Yeah, what's cool about this is all throughout the building, we're designing, testing, characterizing these chips. Now we're actually doing manufacturing. While the wafers are done overseas in the U.S., these wafers now have a critical step of doing all the electrical testing. And this is critical because we are guaranteeing the best performance for clean energy semiconductors, the best reliability. And the machine behind us then tests this. Right, it's doing high volume manufacturing right here. It takes about a half a second to test every little chip on this wafer very thoroughly. A lot of tests being done in that half a second. Each one of these together, we have four of them, they can produce around 40 to 50,000 wafers tested every year which for a company like ours translates to up to $250 million of revenue. We're about a $50 to $70 million company today. So the fact that we're investing in four of these to go to $250 million speaks to the growth opportunity in front of us to be ready to ramp up a lot of manufacturing of these chips. Now we're in the reliability lab and it is hot in here. It does run very hot in here. And it's actually by design that we're running these chips under really extreme temperature, voltage, and current to simulate what they would experience in the real world on your roof, in your car, charging things for 10, 15, 20, even 30 years. With our proprietary test methods, and we have a lot of these ovens here, to heat them up, we can run 20 year life test in only about six or seven weeks. Very critical to make sure these have super great reliability. How hot is this? Yeah, it runs uh, up to 200 degrees C and that's pretty darn hot. We have to test the heck out of these things to make sure they're gonna operate without fail for 20 to 30 years. A high standard that is a must for one very high profile customer. 
the military. We've actually had a lot of long-standing cooperation with the Army, the Navy, and other defense organizations. They are actually often pushing the limit for large power electronics, high-voltage power chips. And the work we can do with the military, we can then take that technology, not only help the U.S. government, but then take it, and usually there will be great commercial opportunities for that same technology. For example, as we upgrade the power grid, which is going to need major upgrades in the next 10 or 20 years to handle this huge demand in electricity that we're all bringing. Yes, this company is electrifying our world one charger, car, solar panel, power grid, and more at a time. If you look today, only 20% of our energy sources comes from what we call electrified applications, which is really solar and wind. They can very efficiently convert solar power and wind power into electricity, zero use of fossil fuels. The vast majority of those energy sources are fossil fuels. Gas and oil, of course, are bad for the planet and limited in the resources. But also our applications, what do we do with the energy? Whether it's traveling in cars, transportation, planes and trains, or it's just getting up and running appliances in your house and heating and cooling and cooking, 80% of that is also still using fossil fuels. Only 20% is electrified. So our job is not complete until we reverse that. We want 80% of the energy sources coming from those electrical sources, solar and wind, for example. We want 80% of all these energy uses or applications to be electrified. And when they're electrified, it's just a better product, a better experience, a better price point, more reliable. It's just better in every way.